If you clicked on this video, you are probably familiar with the fact that ice is the hardest and most frustrating surface in all of Trackmania. Your car has no grip at all, it slides all over the place, and you feel like a noob when it flies off the map or into several walls. It took me a long time to learn ice myself, but I can tell you it's pretty fun when you master it, and it's not really that hard to get the basics down. So in this video, I'm going to teach you everything that I know about ice and how you can get good at it in a short time as possible. Let's begin. For this video, I prepared three maps for you. You don't have to play them, but I do recommend it. You can find them by going to the club campaigns in the solo tab and searching for virtual ice training. We'll go into the first map, which is just a huge ice arena where we can experiment and get familiar with the physics. Now, what a lot of new players run into is that they want to uh, steer on ice and things don't work anymore. So if you want to go to the right, you start pressing to the right and the car is spinning out of control. Things are not going the way you were hoping. And at this point, it's very easy to get frustrated. Why is this car acting this way? <laughs> it's because on ice, everything is kind of the opposite of what you think it is. So to go to the right, you actually have to press left when the car is sideways. If I want to go to the right, I'm first going to hold right, put the car sideways and then steer left like this. And now the car will ice slide towards the right and eventually straighten out and I'm going somewhere towards the right. I can do that again and it looks like this. But this isn't really reaching the full level of control we want because right now I'm essentially aiming for a point to the right that I can't even see and just hoping that the car will straighten out in that direction. But that's not really good enough. So what we're going to do is we're going to add another element of control, controlling your eye slides. And the way you can do that is either by braking or releasing. In simple terms, pressing brake during an ice slide will tighten the turn. It'll make you steer more. Uh, you should be careful pressing it too much or you might lose grip entirely. You can see small brake taps like this will make my car steer a lot sharper. And the opposite to that is that releasing acceleration during these turns will make you stop the ice slide entirely. If you just release, the car will instantly snap out of the ice slide and go whatever direction your momentum is. So if I do a sharp ice slide here and I release, the car will just keep going that direction. And if you do smaller release taps, well then you can kind of make a turn go a little bit wider, but this is also very risky business um, and something you'll, you'll have to get a feeling for because it, it can make you lose all your grip entirely. But that is essentially the uh, ice arena here. I'll quickly show a drawing I made to demonstrate how this uh, works. Uh, this is my drawing. You can see that this is you right here. If you want to go to the left, follow the blue line. You first press left when the car is facing sideways. You hold right and then you can choose your adventure. If you release, the car will go less to the left. And if you brake, it will go more. And if you just hold right, it'll end up somewhere in the middle. I hope that makes sense. That is the basics of ice sliding, but now let's see if we can put it into practice on a map with, with real turns. TMS Ice 13, I was hunting it a little bit earlier today and I, I do like the map, so I think I can explain it pretty well. Uh, let's first look at the overview. We have three turns here. So one that goes to the left, the next one to the right, and the last one is to the left. So knowing what we know now, we're going to press left and then when it's sideways, hold right. And then our ice slide doesn't go where we wanted to. So we need to steer more. And to steer more, we have to press brake. Now, this is something you have to just do a lot of times to get comfortable with, because it's not that intuitive um, how many, how much you need to press brake during an ice slide. But you can see that the same thing happens for this next turn. If I just hold left, it very likely will not work. And so at some point during the turn here, I will have to press brake to tighten my turn. Now, something very important to note is that you can press brake too much and then it's very hard to recover your turn. So small brake taps is something you should get used to. And this last one, basically no brake tap needed at all. But a very important thing is in the ending, you can see that we're going sideways and we're going onto a road. And if you don't release here, the car is not going to straighten in a, in a good manner. It's going to be very awkward, and what I do recommend, if you see something like this on an ice map, is to release well ahead of the road, straighten your car with the way it's traveling, its momentum, 
and then you are able to control the turn a lot better. So here I can straighten the car, I get full grip and now I can make the turn into the finish. Let's try to do that in a bit more of a cohesive run. So I'm going to start out a bit to the right, hold left, press right, do a few brake taps and then release here to set up for the next turn. Brake tap here. This turn looks good. I'm going to release a bit here to straighten my car for the next turn. I'm going to hold right, tap brake twice, and now I, importantly, release for the ending. And I missed the last angle a little bit. But that's kind of how you want to do a regular ice map. And this one and similar maps like it, short ice maps like this, uh, is the best way to practice in my opinion. You can play longer maps, but I really think you will improve quicker by, um, by playing shorter maps where you can repeatedly try turns until you get a good feeling for them. So here, release, send it through the last corner and I get a 21-2. You can try this map and let me know how you do. I'd say if you get under 22 seconds or even under 23 seconds, you, you're really starting to get the hang of ice lights. The last map I wanna show you kind of incorporates everything in a bit more of a professional sense. This is a map you might see in Cup of the Day and it has in fact been an old Cup of the Day map and it features some more things you should try to think about on an ice map. This is a beautiful map as well. Um, we're starting with an ice slide down the hill, and here I immediately notice I have to tap brake a few times. Also, I'm going to go into the wall. So we'll, <laughs> we'll reset and do another run. Um, so we steer left, go past the sign, brake tap a few times. And one very important thing is something called slide out, which you might experience on a map like this. It's when the car either shifts gear up or if you release and it's in a bad position, you cannot catch your grip again. So the car will just then stall for a few seconds and you will basically just have to wait. Uh, might be able to put in a demonstration clip of what, a, what a slide out looks like. But on couple of the day maps, they can be quite frequent. And actually the main reason that people get eliminated from, ra from rounds, and if you want to win a couple of the days or be more consistent on ice, there's something very important to watch out for. There's a few like guidelines you should follow regarding slide outs. First of all, your gear matters a lot. If you are in fourth gear, you can basically take almost any angle you want, any sharp ice slide angle, and the car will not slide out. In fourth gear, you're kind of in like the safe zone where the slide outs for the most part cannot hurt you. Um, if you are in third gear though, you are at risk. So if I slow down to third gear, there's now a very huge probability that in one of these turns, I will lose grip. Here I actually got the gears at a good time. Let me try to, I'm not sure if I can force it, but uh, yeah, here, that was a slide out. That right there was a slide out. Uh, it, it very frequently happens in third gear or lower, but in fourth gear, you're kind of safe. Uh, another thing you should know is that mid ice slide, Releasing acceleration is very dangerous. Sometimes it's necessary and sometimes it's good, but generally you only want to do it at the end of the turn. If I release in the middle of the turn here, slide out, okay? So once you've committed for an ice slide, it's best to just stick to your decision than to hesitate and release, or the car will just most likely slide out. And with that one said, I'm just trying to think if there's more. Yeah, here, I'm gonna show you this one again. The car shifted from third gear to fourth in the ice slide, and that's also causing me to lose grip. So to summarize that in a very simple explanation, if you shift up from third to fourth, you will lose grip, most likely. Uh, if you release acceleration in fourth gear, you will lose grip, most likely, in the ice slides. So those are some dangerous things to watch out for. But something to look for and something you, you might know, you might feel that you're doing something correctly, is if you notice the car is in a 90 degree angle. That's, that's often something you look for on ice. So in an ice slide, if the car has a 90 degree angle perpendicular to the turns, you really cannot slide out. Uh, Mika, the best ice player, calls this the 90 degree shield. And it doesn't have to be exactly 90 degrees, but anything in that ballpark is gonna put you in a safe, comfortable position. So I think what I'll do now is I'll play this map a little bit, get a clean run, and then demonstrate for you guys what I was thinking about during it.
quite bad last turn, but a good time. Uh, I'll take that. <laughs> what? Okay, well. Oh, that was almost world record. <laughs> All right, guys, so that was a pretty good run. It was top eight world, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. But let's analyze it and see what I did well and what you can do to get similarly good times on ice maps yourself. It really only requires a lot of practice and knowledge about what you should go for. So in the first turn, I'm thinking about going close to the sign. Pretty obvious, but you really want to take tight lines where you can. Uh, and also, I'm thinking about setting up this ice slide holding forwards and right um, at the earliest possible moment. I notice I need one small break tap to get around this corner, and at this point I know that I will survive the turn. And this is kind of important because now, mentally, I am already thinking about the next turn. And the way I know that this turn is going to work is I'm looking at this back wheel and I'm trying to imagine a, a line where it um, gets past this corner. And I can tell that this curve will get there, so I'm already kind of... I've gotten through the first turn and I'm thinking about the next turn. So I can see that line happens and I get a nice wide setup here. And in this turn I do two brake taps, or one brake tap. The reason I do this is because I know that this map continues with a very sharp left-hander up here. I'm kind of thinking one turn ahead. And since it has a sharp turn, I would like to uh, be as much the right side here as possible. So I break to get a good setup. And then my plan is to do a very sharp uh, release here to turn my car 180 in preparation for the next ice slide. I hope that all makes sense. But yeah, if we go back just a little bit, you can see that here. I try to go sharp on the inside and then release a lot so I can get this next ice slide on the tight corner and carry a lot of speed. Now here, if you look at my trajectory, you'll see that um, if I just keep pressing forwards and right, it might actually crash the left wall. This is not a great trajectory. But with a release tap here, I can get a really nice uh, wide setup. If I wait for the right time to release, then uh, I can set up wide for the next corner and rinse repeat. So I'm trying to time this here. Uh, once I saw that I had a good setup, I'm trying to just time this release tap. And now look at the line that I have, look at the setup. This is going to be a really good next segment on the map. And I follow it up and I do two brake taps while going tight. And the reason is again that, you know, this next left-hander is going to be very tight. So I need a good setup for this. So I need sharp turn followed by a uh, good 180. And ice really isn't, you know, on a map like this, more complicated than that. The, the principles are kind of easy to understand. Sharp turn here, release a lot to get a tighter turn on the next one. Actually executing it is really the hard part. Here at the end of this turn, I tap break again. And you kind of have to. Uh, even with the break tap, you can see just with the smallest margin that I make this turn on, on the red line here. So, but it's also important when you break. If I do the break tap early on in this turn, it's not going to have the same effect, but I let it kind of go through the turn and then do it late uh, to only really slow down when I absolutely have to. Uh, moving on, I release here to set up for this ice slide early. When I notice it's right, I hold forwards and left, and then I try to get a tight line. I extend the ice slide with a lot of brake taps. And in the last turn, I actually make a mistake here by going too fast. You can see how wide I'm going in this turn. I'm going all the way away from the apex. And that probably cost me two, three tenths of a second. Uh, the correct play here would be to release here. When you can tell that the car is going to make it past that corner, like we talked about, like this back wheel is going to make it past this one. I can already start thinking about turning around and setting up for this last ice slide. So I should release, maybe even break going into the last ice slide and get a tight line through the last corner. But in general, I hope this has been really helpful. Let me know if you want to learn more about ice. There's still more small details. Try the maps, post your times in the comments how you're doing, what you struggle most with, what isn't clear, but I can do better. And let's all improve at Trackmania together. But I hope that you'll give ice a try because a lot of people they just outright reject ice maps. They don't play them if they're a couple of the day because they're not that fun. But trust me, they can be. And trust me, it is really fun to master ice. So let me know how it goes for you. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.